So, we are ready to go. First keynote of the day. Please welcome on stage Jeff Wittig, the CPO of Ampere, and enjoy your day with us here. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, it's great to be here. You know, it's been a long three-year hiatus. I know everyone's glad to be back in person, and I'm especially glad to be here as well. You know, when I was last here on stage three years ago, I talked about the challenges of building out next-generation cloud infrastructure and services. Now, at the time, we were heavy on challenges, and the industry still lacked sustainable solutions uh, in order to grow out the cloud in a sustainable uh, fashion for the future. Now, the great news is, uh, since I was last here, I, I joined Ampere Computing, and I've had the pleasure over the last couple of years to be working with an amazing team of engineers who are dedicated to building what's next for cloud computing, for building a processor designed from the ground up for the unique needs of the cloud, and to do so in a sustainable manner. If we look back over the last couple of decades, there's been several changes in compute. What typically happens is the dominant usage model is displaced by a new model driven by new usages, new deployment models. Software then pretty quickly evolves to better suit the needs of that usage model. And then at some point down the road, hardware ultimately evolves as well to match that software model and that usage model which then in turn gets the flywheel going around more innovation. We saw this in the past as mainframes were displaced by the client server model. The rise of use cases like PCs and laptops gave rise to client computing, which quickly forced a shift in the software model from a monolithic model to a more distributed model. And then at some point down the road, the underlying architecture also changed to become x86 based. And that change usually happens about a decade in. A tipping point is reached in the model, and then the hardware evolves to catch up. And we're right in the midst of one of those inflection points today. Now, the cloud isn't new. The cloud's been around for over a decade. We've seen the shift from the client-server model to a microservices-based model. And we're now at that tipping point where it's time for a new hardware architecture to actually match the needs of the underlying usage model, continuing to use legacy x86 CPUs that were designed for a client usage model, designed for laptops and PCs, is just not sufficient anymore. Not only does it not match the usage model, it's not sustainable. We need to disrupt that model, and we need to disrupt it with cloud-native processors. Now, before I go into all of the architectural reasons why you need a cloud-native processor, why the usage model matters, why the underlying hardware matters, sustainability is at the core of this. As we look over the next couple of years, the growth in the cloud will demand at least a 2x increase in compute by 2025. If we continue to just build out the cloud with the same hardware that we've been using for the last decade or more, the same x86 legacy CPUs, doubling the compute capacity would require 2x the power and 60% more real estate. Clearly, that's not sustainable. We've seen places like Singapore, Amsterdam, and others impose moratoriums or severely limit future build-out of data centers whether because of energy consumption, water consumption, real estate, noise issues. So clearly we need a new path forward to meet the future compute needs without doing so in an unsustainable and irresponsible manner. If we took a new approach using Ampere's cloud-native processors designed for the cloud, you could meet those compute needs and actually reduce your power consumption from what's used today. You could use less power and less real estate. So clearly, we're at an inflection point where we need a new hardware model. And let me give you a few examples of how this could work. Leftel Mine Data Center in Norway is one of the world's greenest data centers. 
It's built out of an old mine. It's located right next to renewable resources. It is extremely efficient from a cooling perspective. There's no carbon footprint. Their PUE is close to one. And because the mine is already there, it doesn't require any additional build out. So they already have an incredibly efficient data center. Now, what if you added Ampere's cloud native processors to that same data center? Because of their amazing efficiency and the density that they can provide, you can actually deploy 2.4 times more cores per rack in the Leptal Mine data center if you use Ampere's cloud native processors versus legacy x86 processors. So you take the amazing efficiency of the data center, you add the amazing efficiency of Ampere CPUs, and you get a even more sustainable solution. Another example is the work that we've been doing with, with Cloud and Heat at Ampere. I think you've heard uh, a bit from Cloud and Heat over the last day or so. Their objective is to transform energy to heat and data, or energy to data and data to heat. Uh, creating that circular economy where you can use the byproducts of cooling your data center and turn them into something useful, like using that heat to create potable water from seawater. Now, if you were to use Ampere's cloud native processors because of the amazing power efficiency, the fact that you can deliver more performance per watt, in that same model, you can maximize your data output so you get the same great benefits of Cloud and Heat's model but you can multiply it by getting even more cloud output. You know, with, with cloud and heat and Ampere's processors, it really is cloud and heat, not just heat. So I thought I'd talk a little bit more about the actual change that's occurred over the last decade or so. And then I'll talk about what our cloud native processors do to, adjust, to address that. So the, a massive growth in the cloud, everyone here knows that, is driven by the fact that you have enormous pools of compute resources that are elastic, that are ready on demand. You can scale out to any location to meet your demand at any point in time. You can scale from the cloud out to the edge. And that flexibility, that scalability, the ability to scale out, that's what makes this model so appealing. You can run thousands of cores for one hour instead of running thousands of hours on one core. Pretty appealing model. Now, as time's gone on, developers have taken advantage of this, broken applications down into microservices. By breaking things down into microservices, you now increase the flexibility in the way that you deploy your applications. You can scale up and scale down individual parts of the application. You can break up the development cycle and iterate more quickly within specific aspects of the application. And that further drives this distributed approach. And as latencies become incredibly important in many applications, more and more of these deployments are occurring not just in big central data centers, but also out in edge locations. And deploying containerized microservices makes it a very, very scalable and portable model. And so if we look at an example like ride hailing. So in ride hailing, Typically, these big monolithic applications, they've been broken down into a bunch of different microservices. So maybe you have one microservice that does billing, one that's controlling various aspects of the mapping, one that's uh, actually calling a driver and bringing them to your location. Now, over time, the demands will change. Some rides are more complex than others, some are longer than others. Sometimes you have more demand in certain locations. Billing might be more complex. And so you can scale up and down individual parts of that application. And you want to do so without sacrificing performance. So you want every user to receive the same great experience all the time. You want to be able to predictably scale up and scale down. And you'd like to do so within your existing data center environment. You're not going to go and deploy a new data center on demand just because there was a spike around, say, the holidays. And so it's this distributed and elastic approach to applications development that has driven the new usage model, that's driven the new software model, and now it's time for a new hardware model, not one that's based on legacy x86 CPUs. And so if we look at what is it specifically that the cloud actually demands, there's three things, three main things that the cloud demands. Cloud users, cloud developers demand 
predictable performance. That means high performance all the time, regardless of how many users are running, regardless of what applications are running. You want to eliminate noisy neighbor problems. You want to enable, uh, eliminate tail latency issues. You want to meet your SLAs every time. The cloud also demands linear scalability. When you request twice the number of VMs, twice the number of cores, you want to get twice the amount of performance, twice the amount of capacity. So it's important that you're able to take advantage of all of those additional compute resources. And lastly, you want power efficient compute density. We talked about the sustainability benefits of power efficiency. By having power efficient processors, it enables us to deliver more cores, it allows you to de deploy more cores per rack, more cores in the data center. That's more capacity to meet your growing needs. Additionally, saving power means saving money, so the TCO benefits shouldn't be ignored either. And so these demands are very different than the demands of a client processor. Let me use an example. Let's say you, you had a, uh, a single person, a bachelor or bachelorette, living in, a, say, a 40-year-old single-family house. Everything starts out great. They've got lots of space. They can roam between all the bedrooms, plenty of resources. You can control everything exactly the way that you want. This sounds great. This is sort of like the client model. Now let's say there's a big economic boom in town. A bunch of families move in. You can't build a whole lot of new houses, so you're stuck with what's there. So let's say now a whole bunch of other families move into this house. People are sharing bedrooms, they're sharing the bathroom, the kitchen. Sounds like a disaster. People are always eating your food. You can't control the temperature. You're waiting on the shower. The hot water runs out all the time. This is like using a client CPU in the cloud. Think of Ampere's cloud native processors. This is the Brand new 128 unit luxury condo. It's custom built for multi tenancy. You can control the temperature. You've got privacy. You don't have a bunch of noisy neighbors butting into your space. And it was built with power efficiency in mind. So you don't need to go back and weatherproof the house, tape up the windows to keep out the draft. It was built with energy efficiency in mind from the start. So, what did we actually do then to build this? this cloud-native processor. It meant a grounds-up approach to the CPU. We designed the cores to be single-threaded in order to increase isolation, provide that predictable performance that reduces context switching between different users, reduces contention and resources between different users. We developed the processor to run at a consistent operating frequency all the time. So you don't see variation as more users come on board or variation as the workload changes. That produces that really predictable performance for end users. We build our processor with very large private caches. The issue with the shared caches is that as you fill the processor full of users, users evict each other's contents that you wanted to use for your next, uh, your next job. With large private caches, you reduce that contention and noisy neighbor effect. And we built the processor with power and area efficiency in mind. So our cores are extraordinarily efficient, which leads to processors with up to 128 cores today and much more beyond that. So what does that actually look like when you deploy these processors in the cloud? If we look at a range of workloads that are common in the cloud, let's say web serving like Nginx or databases like Cassandra, MySQL, in-memory caches like Memcached, Redis, and even media encoding. You can see here overwhelming performance leadership with the Ampere Ultramax 128 core processor. Compared to the best processors available from Intel and AMD, the Intel Ice Lake 8380, we have a 3.9x performance advantage uh, on key workloads. Compared to AMD's Milan, the Epic 7763 processor, we have up to 1.6x performance advantage. And then when you look at power efficiency, the results are even better. Compared to Intel, we have up to 4x per, per watt advantage and an almost a 1.9x advantage compared to AMD. So the architectural choices we made, the design of this processor, 
leads to real advantages on a diverse set of cloud workloads. If you have time later, you should also come by the booth. Inferencing is another very important workload for the cloud. AI inferencing is often happening in a very distributed manner across a number of nodes. Being able to run that on your existing infrastructure in a high performance and efficient manner is key. You can check out our demo. We have a AI team at Ampere uh, based in Warsaw uh, that's been doing some amazing work on the AI front. They have provided software tools that allow the user to seamlessly optimize the performance of their AI models running on the Ampere Ultra processors and do so in a seamless way that requires uh, little intervention. Now, I thought I would bring somebody up on stage to talk a little bit more about some of the real life advantages in a real use case. So I'd like to bring up Lucas Hertig, the Senior Vice President of Business Development from Plus. Morning, everyone. Morning. Thank, Thank you for the invitation, Chip. Yeah, absolutely. So, I hear that you have deployed some new products on Ampere Ultra processors. Tell me more about it. Yes, so about three, four months ago, uh, I looked at our uh, requests for uh, new feature requests for Plesk. I mean, I probably don't need to introduce Plesk much on this event because everyone knows Plesk and CPanel and our group of companies. Um, I looked at our feature requests and found 76 feature requests that our software should be running on ARM. And we were thinking like, hmm, that's interesting, why, why should we be running on ARM? And we started researching, and I talked with our engineering leads in the Plesk division, and three weeks later they came around the corner and said, oh, because we created the ARM version. I said, like, how did you create that in like just three weeks? And here I want to announce that Plesk is the first hosting platform that is in the industry if it's for large-scale shared hosting or for VPS, dedicated e-commerce hosting, large-scale WordPress. Uh, we are the first platform now available on ARM, uh, specifically with the Ampere um, architecture. We have done uh, uh, analysis together with the Ampere team and have seen significant performance differences. And I think what the result is kind of a uh, best price performance ratio in terms of servers and uh, costs versus uh, what you get for it. And interestingly enough, we have generated, in just the first month after we launched it, we generated over a thousand instances with Plask on ARM. It was mostly on the Oracle Cloud, where uh, that is powered by Ampere. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, all the other service providers we're working with, we would be happy uh, if you decide to launch uh, ARM architecture based on Ampere. Uh, we would be uh, an amazing use case, I believe, um, especially around this event and around this industry. Thanks, Lucas. Yeah, it sounds like one, it was, it was super easy to, uh, to actually get up and running on our, on our ARM-based Ampere processors. And if you look at the, the plot there, that's showing the performance and cost advantages of the, of the Ampere Ultra A1 instances at, at OCI versus the uh, Intel and AMD instances. You can see with, with performance and cost advantages like that, it, it's pretty compelling for end users to go and, and run Plesk on, on Ampere. Absolutely. Right. Thanks, Thanks, Lucas. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay, so you've seen a, a, a real example of the benefits of running on Ampere Ultra processors. It's easy to do large performance and cost advantages, and, and users love it. Now, for everyone else here, uh, there's a lot of different ways to get started with uh, Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max CPUs. Uh, we have a number of OEMs and ODMs that have built platforms, over 25 platforms in all kinds of different form factors and configurations are available. If you check out the, uh, the demo floor, we've got systems out there from Supermicro, from, from Inspur, uh, we have platforms from Foxconn, Gigabyte, WeWin. Uh, we even have a COM HPC board for 80 link uh, if you want to uh, do, say, some development at the, at the edge. So a number of different platforms uh, on our Ampere and Ultra, Ultra, and Ultra Max CPUs. These platforms support both of the CPUs uh, and, uh, and support what we call the world's first cloud-native processor. 
but it's not just the hardware. I know there's people here that uh, deploy in the cloud. Uh, there's different ways that you might get access to our hardware. And so when, when we look at enabling the ecosystem, it all starts you know, first with the Ultra and Ultra Max processors. Uh, we've built uh, a number of different firmware models on top of that. We've got firmware off the shelf from AMI. Uh, we've also enabled projects like OpenBMC and EDK2 if you really want to get down into the guts of the, of the system and customize them for yourself. Uh, we support all of the major Linux distributions as well as FreeBSD, so OS support isn't a problem. Uh, we have a number of uh, SIs and distributors that you can also get systems from, uh, Avantech in the UK, Avnet, Phoenix. Uh, they have a wide range of, of platforms available there. And I'm also really excited that we have a couple of European cloud partners as well. Uh, Staleway has been working with us on uh, Ampere Ultra-based services, and today, for the first time, I can announce that Hetzner uh, is also working on an upcoming Ampere Ultra-based cloud instance. So for those of you that don't want to procure a server, you don't want to uh, you know, get your hands on the hardware, there's a number of, of cloud instances, not just the ones like Oracle Cloud, uh, but there's a number of European providers. So it's really, really exciting to see this uh, become available globally. Now, another thing that we've done is we've made the software much, much more accessible, much easier to understand how to run software on an ARM-based processor like Ampere Ultra. Every single night, we take over 135 different open source OSs, languages, tools, frameworks, applications. We regress those to make sure that as code changes happen throughout the previous day, we want to make sure that nothing broke. We want to make sure the performance is as good today or better than it was yesterday. And we've made all the results available via our Ampere solution site. So if you go to our webpage, you can go, you can see the results of all of those runs that occurred the night before. We made the results available from uh, running across our own infrastructure. We run it at Oracle Cloud, we run it at Equinix. So you can be assured that these applications run, they run well. You can see exactly what image we grab off of, uh, off of the repository. And so whether you're the one that's running these applications or your users, it's an easy way to, to be assured that everything's going to work right out of the box and work well. So I've talked about the Ampere Ultra and Ultra Max processors. These are both available today, up to 128 cores. They're DDR4, PCIe Gen 4. They have all the server RAS and power management capabilities that you would expect. Easy to use right out of the box. And you can see the amazing results that we've seen, the way that this leads to sustainable solutions. But we can't stop there. We're on a very, very rapid pace of innovation. Every year, we'll be releasing a new cloud-native processor this year, we'll be releasing our next processor, which is five nanometer based. And the really exciting thing is that the new processor that we'll release uses our own Ampere custom cores. They're still ARM based, so all the software work that's been done over the last couple of years still carries forward onto this processor. But it's our own ground up Ampere processor. We built everything from the microarchitecture up We've been working on this for the last couple of years. It's ready for prime time now, ready to get out there. And what that's going to allow us to do is it allows us to continue to extend the performance range, push to higher core counts, do so in an incredibly power efficient manner. I mentioned that everything we do has to be oriented around cloud use cases. And so building a core that itself was designed specifically for these scale out cloud use cases is incredibly important. It's going to allow us to build new features into the processor, new features around security, manageability, aspects of cloud usage that people passionately care about. So our new processors will continue to add more performance, become more power efficient. We'll bring in new memory and I.O. technologies to increase bandwidth and performance. Now, obviously, to deliver a processor every single year, requires a different approach from a design and architecture perspective as well. So at Ampere, we, we threw out the old design methodology. We really adopted 
a methodology that looks more like an agile software model. So we iterate quickly. We focus a lot on uh, pre-silicon readiness. You know, we do full emulation, running OSs before we've ever even seen a piece of silicon. This allows us to iterate very rapidly, work very early with our customers. We do this because the pace of innovation in the cloud, as you know, is incredibly fast. I can try and predict what's going to happen five, six years from now, but I'm pretty sure by the time we get there, the needs will change to something that we couldn't even imagine today. And so this cadence allows us to innovate with customers on a 12, 24 month cycle versus the more traditional five to six year cycles. So faster innovation, meeting the needs of, of our customers and doing so in a radically different way from a design perspective. So I'm excited about the products that we have out here today. You've seen the leadership. We will be driving leadership for the next decade, hopefully with everyone here. And I know that for everyone here, sustainability is key to our growth, whether you're building hardware for the cloud, operating a cloud, using a cloud, writing software for the cloud. You depend on future cloud growth for your success. And we have to do so in a sustainable manner. It's time to disrupt the status quo. It's time to use a processor that was designed for the cloud and that can deliver sustainability. It's time for our cloud native processors from Ampere. And I'm excited to work with everyone here over the, the coming decade to, uh, to continue to innovate and drive that sustainable future. Thank, Thank you. you.